Today we're going to learn how to use cross processing in Photoshop CC 2015 to really enhance our images. So this is a really good effect if you want to edit a couple of images the same way or you just want to add a totally different effect to your photography work if that's what you're doing. So drag and drop the image that you want to use into Adobe Photoshop and I'm using this image of a lovely family portrait so it's a couple and son typical photography picture obviously if you're a photographer yourself you would have took you know a million of these so here we go let's try and make it a little bit better the first thing you want to do is press ctrl and j to make a duplicate of the background layer and we're going to be adjusting the curves to create the cross processing effect so go to your adjustment layers and select curves now on the rgb just make a point just about three quarters of the way up the first square and then just past the top right hand corner of this square so about the same again roughly about there and bring the bottom one down just a little bit just to add a little bit more contrast to the image so you can see that that's really editing the right hand side of the image it's adding a lot more contrast to the darks and then in the top right hand corner just bring that up just a little bit to add a little bit more lightness to the highlights of the image so that's that done on the rgb next we're going to go over to the reds and this is where we create the cross processing effect by taking opposite colors and moving them in the opposite direction so we're going to be doing that for the red and the green and the blue as well so a really easy way to do this is just make three points first of all so one two three all in exactly the same place and in, in the top right hand corner and then bring the reds down slightly so it's going to add red to your image you don't want to go too far with it but just a little bit down and then at the top just bring that up just ever so slightly now it does add a lot of like red to the face i don't know it's like super fake tan if you <laughs> if you wanted to go all the way up there but we don't really want to go too far with it. I just want to take this ever so slightly upwards just so it doesn't highlight the reds too much around the face area and the rest of the reds of the image will look completely blown out if you take that too far. So just move that one a little bit. Next go over to the greens and do exactly the same again. So top right hand corner, one, two, three and create the same effect again so bring the green down just ever so slightly and then take it up slightly at the top like so and then go over to the blues but this time just create two points in the blues so one here and one there and depending on whether you want a warmer or a cooler overall feel to your image this is going to pretty much determine it within the blues so if you take it up it's going to go cold like that and if you take it down it's going to go warm and it just looks oversaturated i mean really oversaturated if you go down there so although it is a warm image i'm just going to take it up slightly just so there's a more of a blue I don't know like a overall blue texture on the image like you can see a little bit of blues within the face and around the eyes and it matches with the the blue theme obviously that the, the dad's got on and the kids got on and that's purple so we're going to be matching a purple color to match the top and obviously the blue overall screen within the cross processing you'll see what i mean as it goes on but this is just the way that you do it so I'd say that we're pretty much done with that so if we go back to RGB now you can see that we've got these lines here so you've got the red the green and the blue all done and then when you go back to RGB you can see each line as it represents the edits that you've just made so next we're going to add a solid color adjustment layer so get rid of curves because we're done within that and go to your adjustment layers and add a solid color which is right at the top now depending on what color that you want to use for this you can take you can sample a color if you wanted to or you can just choose a preset color so you could go through purple blue whatever you wanted to do but I think I'm going to sample a color from the actual image so I'll just select the layer where the color is and then with the brush tool if you've not got it selected just press B hold alt 
and then select a light purple if we can get a quite light color from the image just zoom in by holding alt and scrolling on the mouse and try and find a pretty light area say about there and then just do the same again to zoom out and then add a solid color adjustment layer of that purple I might just edit that slightly just make it a little bit lighter and then just hit OK and change the blend mode to exclusion and what that does is it adds um, the the darks of the color get changed to the color that you've added basically that's what that's what exclusion does it's it excludes the darks and adds in the color that you filled basically so that's how that works I couldn't explain it any further but I just know that that's what it does now you can adjust the opacity here just click left click on the opacity and you can drag it down and bring it up and you can live edit instead of trying to go to 85 and then 70 and then trying to change it so just bring that down a little bit I do want quite a soft effect going across the whole image so I'll probably take that to about 80 and leave it there next we're going to add a photo filter adjustment layer so go back to your adjustment layers and select photo filter and then for this the the green color that green that's orange Craig the orange color is really good for this type of editing so you can go in through the filters by all means just select one and then press down on the keyboard and you can just select through them and have a look if you wanted to use one of these but generally within photo filter the the preset of orange or the one that it uses at the start the warming filter 85 is really good so just select color and increase the density a little bit I'll change mine to about 30 and then just get rid of that so if you want to see what that's changed just turn it off and then turn it back on and it just adds the warm glow again to the image so it looks warm it's obviously it is a warm day and you want to make sure that, that stays consistent throughout the image it's not you know looking cold like that because of the blues and the purples it does look like it's a warm day but these guys are cold so just warms the image back up again and makes it look a little bit more natural so the next thing we're going to do is add a sort of soft light effect using the screen blending mode so to do that add a new layer in the layers panel so you've got layer 2 on top and select a really soft edged brush so let's say go with that one that one looks pretty good and uh, make sure you've got your opacity and your flow at 100 percent and the hardness of the brush is at zero and then just paint in with whatever color that you want to use so i'm not going to use that purple again i'm going to try something a little bit different maybe go with i don't know i might try I might try an orange let's try an orange so bring up my color palette window and color wherever it is there we go and I'm gonna go with a really bright orange to represent the Sun so let's have a look see that a little bit darker and I think we'll go with that that looks pretty good and then just select in the areas where you want a brush if you need to reduce or increase the size of the brush just use the black it black it <laughs> brackets under the plus and return key and then i'm just gonna feather that in a little bit at the edge like that and see how that looks and then change the blending mode to screen so move that out of the way and change the blend mode to screen wherever screen is there we go so that looks pretty good but it's a little bit too powerful at the moment so I'm just going to reduce the opacity down of that a little bit to say I'll probably go to 40 actually if I get it right just to add a little bit of light and then press enter I'll probably add another one on top of that so new layer and then orange again but just keep it dark just in the top and then same again change the blend mode to screen and reduce the opacity again to about 90 like that and you can always add in if you wanted to 
change the opacity of your brush a little bit just to blend it. So I'll take that down, take that down. And then just lighten it up just to mix the colors in like that. So that's pretty much it on how you use cross processing. So if we go back to the original image and this image, hold control, select all of the layers and then control and G to group them together. And then you can turn off the effects, look at the original image and then turn it back on. So you can see that it's added a lot of colors. It just makes the image look a lot more vibrant. And if you wanted to increase the sharpness a little bit, I'll just show you how to do that. So I'll leave the group as it is. Make a duplicate of the original image by pressing Control and J. And then press Control Shift in U to desaturate the image, which makes a quite interesting image as it is. If I just get rid of the color in the top, you know, you could even use that as one of the images if you wanted to. It just goes to show that, you know, it's this is Photoshop and even just messing around and playing around within it creates some really cool images. I actually really like that. It looks really good, but that's not what we're doing. Desaturate the image and then go to filter, other, high pass, and then make sure you've not got big white areas within the image because they'll really show through and it'll start to pixelate. So that's a little bit too much. So I'll take mine down to about one. So all we can see is fine detail. I'll probably go to 0.8 actually. So all we can see is fine detail. So especially I'm looking for places around the eyes, fine details within the hair, around the jackets and, and stuff like that. So 0.8 is pretty good. And then just hit OK. We desaturate it because we don't want to add additional color. If you left it with in color and did this, then it's going to add more vibrancy to the image and it could blow out certain parts. So we desaturate it. So it's basically like adding a almost half invisible stencil over the top of the image. Change the blend mode to overlay like so. And then if I turn that off and turn it back on, you can see we've added a lot of sharpness. Like if you look in this area here at the top, you can see that the image now overall is, is more sharper. You can see more detail within the uh, jumper, in the baby's face, eyes, everything. It's a lot more sharper as an image. And when you look at that overall, if I just turn those off and go back to the original, there's the sharpening and there is the cross processing effect in Photoshop CC 2015. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did like it, please like, share. Don't be a pen tool as always and subscribe to my channel.